Hello my treasures, it's time for the final Death Knight cards to be revealed and we are going to be focusing on the Blood Death Knight which is the archetype that I was most looking forward out of the three. So let's begin, the first card being Dark Fallen Neophyte which is a three cost undead minion with two attack, five HP, requires one blood rune, has the bow cry, spend two corpses to give all minions in your hand plus two attack. This opens up the possibility of wanting to use one blood rune in a unholy deck which is actually pretty cool outside of that i don't think this card will probably see much play in a pure blood dk deck i could be completely wrong but there is the card that requires two unholy runes in unholy that summons two additional copies of itself and this card makes that card a lot better it also perfectly fits with the curve with that card so i could see that seeing a lot of play if a blood unholy combo deck actually becomes a thing all right for the next card revealed a death strike which is a four cost spell with life steal deal six damage to a minion it has one blood rune I'm really not shocked at all that this card is actually a thing, as Death Strike is one of the key abilities that Blood actually has, and in order to translate it directly into Hearthstone, Lifesteal would have been needed for a card like this. And while it can't actually hit your opponent's face, it is an absolutely incredible control tool, especially given some of the other cards that we've seen so far for Blood and the ones that we'll be going over in the nearby future. Because how it is right now, it looks like Blood is really going to be the absolute control powerhouse of the Death Knight class. Next card revealed is Heart Strike, which is another key ability for Blood DKs in World of Warcraft, which is a one cost spell that deals three damage to a minion. If it kills it, gain a corpse, requires one Blood Rune, pretty decent turn one removal and can get rid of most one drop minions within the game so this card will probably see a lot of play even outside of just a pure blood dk deck if you can manage to use any type of blood runes in any death knight deck this is going to probably be a really really good removal tool because it also turns on a bunch of different synergies that you might not be able to turn on during the first turn without for the next card revealed, it is Soul Breaker, which is a three cost weapon with three attack, two durability, one blood rune after your hero attacks and kills a minion, gain two corpses. Additional corpse synergy for blood death knights also can be used in a unholy deck if you want to go down a one blood, two unholy rune, unholy deck, which might be pretty strong, though Frost does also give you a bunch of draw power, and that's what an aggro base deck usually needs instead of having more additional synergy. I do think this card is pretty decent for a three drop weapon. It does turn on some of the other corpse synergy within the blood archetype without having to run too many additional cards to get additional corpses or rely on just having your hero power. This is basically four corpses for the price of three mana, which is pretty good if you can actually kill a opponent's minion using this card. If you can't, then this is probably a pretty bad weapon. But if you can guarantee that you're going to get lethal with the weapon, this is probably pretty decent to include. Now for another weapon for DK, the Corrupted Ashbringer, and this will play into one of the later cards that we will be seeing. It is a six cost weapon with five attack, two HP, life steal, requires two blood runes. It's kind of a boring card to be honest. However, I do think this will probably see a little bit of play, mainly because you can actually use rune forging to discount this card's cost and it gives you additional life steal, which is actually pretty good. Especially if you're going to kill some minions using this, it will automatically make it where you're not going to take five damage whenever you do attack into a minion. Though I do think if it wasn't for runeforging, this card would be a lot worse because at six mana, only having two durability is kind of incredibly weak, even if it is going to be able to heal you for 10 whenever you do attack with it. It is a common card, so it's not really that big of a shock that it isn't that interesting of a card overall. It does make me a little bit sad that I think Unholy is the only one of the three Death Knight schools that actually managed to not get a single weapon outside of Frostmourne, but it is what it is. Aphyxiate is the next card revealed for Death Knight, which is a three cost shadow spell that requires two blood runes, destroy the highest attack enemy minion. Really, really good removal tool for three mana. Sure, it's only going to remove one target. However, if it is a big enough target, this is absolutely insane, especially if you're using this against a deck 
using the Jailer where you normally can't actually target them with spells. This will get through that. And in a control style deck, this card is really, really good. Outside of a control style deck, I don't know how much play this is actually going to see. But to be honest, I don't think if you're running two Blood Runes, you're not going to play a control style deck. So that's probably why they want with a effect like this. It's kind of sad that we didn't get a Death Grip card within any of these cards revealed because that is a key and probably the most iconic spell for Death Knights in World of Warcraft. Next card revealed is Noxious Cadaver, which is a 1 cost 1 attack, 2 HP undead minion that requires 1 blood rune that deals 2 damage to an enemy and 2 to your hero. Actually a pretty good removal tool for turn 1, though blood itself has better removal tools in my opinion in the form of Heart Strike, though this could be easily used in a blood unholy matchup deck because this is just going to do some damage to your opponent's face and drop you with a 1-2, which is actually not the worst stat line in the world. You could also use this as a way to remove a minion from your opponent's board if you really need to in a deck like that. But I think this one will probably see a lot of play because it is a aggro tool and aggro decks always love cards like this. It's just free to damage whenever you do play it. All right, next card revealed is Bone Guard Commander, which is an 8 cost, 8 attack, 8 HP undead minion that requires 1 blood rune. Taunt, Battlecry, rise up to 6 corpses as 1 to Risen Footman with Taunt. I'm assuming these Footmen can't actually generate additional corpses because that would be absolutely broken. I do think this card is probably a little bit too weak given the fact that it is a 8 drop card. Sure, you can get an entire board off of something like this, but as it currently stands, I think Blood Death Knight is the Death Knight that has a lot of hand buffs, which is a little bit weird, but is what it is. And Unholy seems to be the one that has a lot of board buffs. So if you can fit this in a Unholy Blood DK deck, then this is probably all right but in a pure blood dk deck i don't think this is going to be too strong next card revealed is vicious a blood worm which is a two cost three attack two hp beast with one blood rune battle cry give a minion in your hand attack equal to this minion's attack really weird again as i mentioned before blood seems to be the one that buffs up the hand it's cool to see a card like this because it is one of the iconic blood DK talents in World of Warcraft. And at two mana, it is just basically a 3-2 that gives a minion in your hand three attack, which isn't necessarily that bad. Again, I think this is an R card that will probably be used in a unholy DK deck instead of a blood DK deck. As it currently stands, I don't see any reason to run this in a pure blood DK deck, but if you have ways to actually buff up your hand by a bunch in blood DK, then this card might see a lot of play in some type of hand buff blood dk deck instead of a control deck all right the next card revealed is blood tap which is a two cost two blood rune shadow spell that gives all minions in your hand plus one plus one spend three corpses to give them plus one plus one more i do think blood dk seems to be the one of the three archetypes of dk that actually doesn't really have a central game plan sure you have a bunch of uh, control tools that we have been seeing also but you also have a lot of these hand buff tools which kind of divides the archetype into two different types of decks which could be cool from a deck design perspective however it does make me worry a little bit that blood dk isn't going to be the strongest Though, then again, that might be a really good thing because a lot of the cards from Blood DK look like they're going to be extremely annoying to actually play against. The next card revealed is Hematurge, which is a 2 cost, 2 attack, 3 HP minion that requires 2 blood runes. Battlecry, spend a corpse to discover a blood rune card. If you want to get maximum HP, this is the perfect card for you because there's only a certain amount of blood rune cards in the game. And the chances of you getting Vampiric Blood is going to be absolutely insane. There's also a bunch of other blood cards that you would actually want as additional removal tools or additional ways to screw over your opponent, especially given the very, very last card that we'll be reviewing in this batch. I think this one will probably see a lot of play, similar to the other two Discover Whatever Rune cards, because all three have really small pools, and you can guarantee yourself additional cards that you really want those additional copies of. The next card revealed is Soul Stealer, which is an 8 cost, 3 blood rune, undead minion, 5 attack, 
5 HP. Battlecry, destroy all other minions. Gain one corpse for each enemy destroyed. If you have a bunch of death rattles, this is incredibly good on your side. But even if you don't have a bunch of death rattles, it's also incredibly good because you're generating corpse synergy and you're destroying your opponent's entire board. This counteracts any jailer deck that your opponent might actually play. Sure, it does cost 8 mana, but I do think this card will probably see a lot of play in a pure Blood Death Knight deck, which is the reason why with one of the earlier cards, I thought that card would not see a lot of play in a Blood Death Knight deck because this is just a way better 8 drop. It gets you so much advantage, it isn't even funny. All right, for the next card revealed, it is Deathbringer Sarfang, who is a 5 cost, 3 attack, 5 HP undead minion that requires 2 blood runes, taunt, death rattle, return this to your hand. It costs health instead of mana. Basically, a minion that can go infinite if you really, really want to, though it will require you 5 HP every single time you do want to play him back down. If you have ways to actually buff him up, then this might be a pretty decent card overall. It also is an instant silence target if there aren't a bunch of silences in the metagame or standard when this card gets printed this is going to be incredibly annoying to actually deal with. Sure it's going to again take 5 HP every time you actually play it but being able to play a card that just keeps coming back down can actually do a lot of damage over the course of a very very long game especially if you have a bunch of life steal cards which blood dk actually has or ways to get additional maximum hp like blood dk has i don't think this is probably the best blood dk legendary that we have seen i think patchwork is way way better than that and i do think the next card revealed which is alexandros morgrain aka the first Ashbringer. He is a 7 cost minion with 7 attack, 7 HP. He has the undead tag, requires 3 blood runes. Battle cry for the rest of the game. Deal 3 damage to your opponent at the end of your turns. This is the entire reason why we can't have Knights of the Frozen Throne in rotation when this card exists at the same time because of Draki Enchanter in combination with this plus. Brand's Bronzebeard would be absolutely insane. Sure, this card looks like it's a little bit slow. However, on turn 7 or turn 10, if you want to combo it out with a Brand Bronzebeard, this card will start doing 3 damage each individual turn to your opponent, and Blood DK specializes in the fact that they can keep restoring their own HP and control the board, hand, and deck of the opponent, which means a card like this will eventually just kill your opponent if they have no types of healing, and given that Death Knight also now has a card that makes it where your opponent can't actually heal, the combination of these two might be absolutely insane. We also have the Blood Rune Generating card, where this card might be really, really easy to actually generate off of that. And if you can get additional copies, this ramps up incredibly, incredibly fast, and most people won't be able to actually deal with it. And while I'm going to have a lot of fun with a card like this on day one of the set release, I do understand how annoying a card like this is going to be, especially in combination with a certain dwarven character, aka Brand's Bronzebeard, and I stand by my statement ever since Sire Denathrius has been released that Brand's Bronzebeard really, really needs to rotate out. I don't know how many really powerful Battlecry minions are needed to be printed for someone to realize, hey, Brand Bronzebeard might not be really good to have in standard Hearthstone right now, when we have a bunch of cards that can easily abuse him as much as humanly possible. And Blood DK seems to have a lot of very powerful Battlecry minions in the form of both this and patches where you just nuke your opponent's life or even cards out of their hand, deck, and field really, really easily. Bran needs something changed about him. Maybe you only repeat the first Battlecry each turn or something. I don't know. There just needs to be something done to Bran before cards like this or Sire or any of the other really powerful Battlecry cards in standard become an incredibly large issue. But those were all the cards revealed today. Let me know down below which of the three archetypes of Death Knight you're most looking forward to playing now that we've seen all the cards. I'm honestly most looking forward to probably Blood just because I like a ultimate control deck. Though Frost looks like a lot of fun too because I am missing a spell damage based deck. Though I do have a spell damage based deck coming out tomorrow so that should be fun. 
With that being said, if you enjoyed the video, please like, comment, and subscribe. Until next time, bye-bye.